like when electric field comes into material then inside the material we are having the positive and negative charges and those charges actually polarize and the electric field is always against that uh, external electric field and the external electric field is reduced. Now how much a given material will withstand the external electric field the dielectric constant gives us that idea. The high dielectric constant means it will withstand to that external electric field more. Low dielectric constant material are actually the one which cannot withstand a given our external electric field. So I can uh, explain this thing here that when we are having a material like this let's say this is a material and inside this material we are having atoms positive and negative it's a dielectric material so dielectric material I will not consider free charges but only the bound charges here and similarly like this different orientations of the atoms and when an external electric field comes in into this medium what will happen that this external electric field is just like plus and minus here so we are having the plus here and minus here and what will happen the plus will repel the plus and attract the negative so these atoms will orient some torque will occur there and these will generate some field which will be from positive they will orient and a field will be generated against it and when this electric field will come inside this one its magnitude will be reduced because this field will be just against this one and this will be the net electric field this field when it comes inside the material it will become this much in magnitude so it will be reduced because in opposing or a polarization field our dielectric field will generate here and it will be opposed here and the same situation actually occurs here so let's consider that we are having consider only electric field here so this is the electric field which is coming in into the medium so this electric field it will always have an angle of 90 degree to this line there will be many lines but i am considering only one line and the electric field is having a 90 angle there now this electric field i can always resolve into components so we will in order to understand this one I will have to plot comparatively uh, big size figure in order to see this thing then how this works so I will design over here another figure now I have zoomed this figure which we consider normally for the refraction of light and here it is so I consider that this is the electric field and the electric field will always be perpendicular to this line so it will make an angle of 90 here now this I can resolve into components and I will say that this is the parallel component parallel to this plane of the medium and and this is a perpendicular component to this plane so the equation that I had written already that epsilon 
I means the dielectric constant of the incident medium and the perpendicular component of the electric field which is in the incident is equal to epsilon t and et and the perpendicular component. So now I know when this light ray or electromagnetic wave hits this medium then what will happen at the boundary because the boundary is shared between the free space and let's say this is water or glass or whatever other medium this is. So we know that the epsilon i is let's say this is free space and epsilon t it is actually the let's say glass. So the glass refractive index is always greater than that of the free space. Now what will happen when this electric field will come in here is I have explained earlier that when this electric field will come here to the medium then inside the medium we are having the positive and negative charges which are in the form of neutral atoms because it's a dielectric material and similarly here and so on we are having these so what will happen when this electric field will come in then they will actually polarize and the polarization field will be in opposite to this field and as a result this field will from this strength it will become of this strength because this plus this will be equal to this one. So some of the field is opposed by the polarization field or the dielectric constant field of this medium and the actual field is reduced. So now let's see here when this component will come in here then it will be no more this much but it will be reduced. Now when it will be reduced then we know that the parallel component the parallel component of the electric field between the two media will remain the same. So it will be this much while this perpendicular component will actually decrease. So let me plot here that this component let me plot here that this is date field means I am exactly plotting this situation. So this is date field and this is the horizontal component and this is the vertical component or the perpendicular component. Now this component will remain the same and this component will decrease. So let's say it is decrease this much. So if it remains only up to here then what will happen this electric field now will actually come in here. So now this electric field has low magnitude and now this is this one was perpendicular to this one but now this line is not perpendicular to this and that's why we say that it will always be perpendicular to it so this line actually becomes perpendicular to this line so that's the reason that if I plot it perpendicular to this then this is the horizontal component which will remain the same and this will be the vertical component and now this angle will actually be 90 degrees. So it is actually due to this reason that the free space dielectric constant is less than the glass because we know that the refractive index for the free space is 1 
while the refractive index for the glass is 1.52. So it is greater than this one and it will reduce the magnitude of the electric field and this will cause the perpendicular component to decrease only while the horizontal component will remain the same and this electric field will reduce in magnitude and it will bend and in order to keep this angle at 90 the light ray will actually not follow this path but the light ray will actually follow this path and that's the reason that the light bends. So the bending is actually can be understood easily by considering the boundary conditions which are derived from the Maxwell equations. This lies also derived from the Maxwell equations, the Snell's law, but it is the final form and here we cannot understand this thing. So it can be very well understand from the Maxwell equation and this is the reason that the light bends due to the boundary conditions here and not due to these incorrect explanations.